Okay, here we are. I've been trying to make a video all day, and uh, little little glitches and stuff have been stopping me from making the videos. So I'm, I let Kevin in for a minute so that everyone can see. He's doing fine. Uh, there's some chips on the floor there, but they're not they're not big, so he's not going to get cut. Not that easily, anyway. You doing okay, Kevin? Hmm? It's been warm lately. Warmer than the past week, anyway. Yeah. Anyway, I got some heat treat. I've been trying to make a heat treat video all day. This is going to be the third attempt. I had to delete the last two attempts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is the season for burrs. I get the burrs in their fur and I have to brush them out. But he doesn't have any today. Okay, yeah, as I was saying, I've been trying to make a heat treat video. It's been a while since I made a heat treat video. I've been saving up a bunch of rocks. Okay, let's hold on here. Get my glasses on. All right, so what I do, in case you don't know, I use a uh, old turkey roaster. I don't know where I got this from. Probably a friend of mine or some member of the family or something. I don't remember where I got it. Anyway, it goes up to 450. Can we see? 450 degrees. Most turkey roasters go up to around 400. Some go up to 450. And very rarely, you can find them find them uh, when they go up to 500. Those are the best ones because it gives you more of a range. Anyway, let's see. And as you can see, it's been sitting out in the shop for quite some time. All this dust. This is insulated. This is a lid. A lot of these have pans, like inner pans. I take the inner pans out. This one, I don't know if it has had an inner pan or not, or if it's just it's all integral. But anyway, if it has an inner pan, usually take that out. It gives you more room. Okay, and then you insulate the lid. This is fiberglass in here, held in place with heavy-duty aluminum foil. Okay, now, sometimes there's an issue with the fiberglass. And I'll tell you what it is. If you've got wet stone, stone that you've gathered out in the wilderness or whatever, and it, some of it's from a stream, some of it's dug up a little bit from underground, like you see just the top of the nodule and you dig it out, it's going to have some moisture in it, especially if you pull that out of a river. But a lot, of, a lot of times stone has moisture in it just laying on the surface, okay, out in the, out in the field. So what you do is you heat it, at 200 degrees for 24, 24 to 48 hours to get that water out, to get most of it out. And the fiberglass, I've noticed with my setup, tends to absorb the steam coming off, the vapors coming off, and they accumulate in the fiberglass here. And the lid gets really heavy, and I'm not sure if the stones are drying out completely because it, it's, the water stays here. So my next turkey roaster is going to have an insulated lid but I think I'm going to crinkle up aluminum foil and put it back in here and have a bunch of aluminum foil inside acting as an insulating layer just a bunch of crumpled up aluminum foil so it doesn't hang on to the water like the fiberglass does I'm thinking all right there are ventilation holes and I probably could put more ventilation holes in there 
to let the moisture escape, but I don't think it escapes fast enough. And uh, hopefully if I put aluminum foil in the lid instead of fiberglass, it'll eliminate that problem. All right, that's the first thing. The next thing is the way I heat treat, it's not high tech. I just put everything in together. And I've had to take this in, take this out, put it back in, take it out, put it back in. Because I, like I said, I tried several times to make a video today. All right, so the next step after you dry it out is to heat, all right? Now what temperature do you heat it at? What temperature do you use to heat? Well, the temperature I use, my baseline is 400 degrees Fahrenheit for four hours. Easy to remember, 400 for four hours. Getting to that heat level is the, is the tricky part. What do I mean? Well, it's at 200. Let's say it's at 200. It's been sitting there. All right, dial it to 200. Put the lid on. Let it sit for 24 to 48 hours. Okay, let's fast forward. It's been sitting there already. This particular batch sat there for 48 hours because I forgot that I had it in there. So I, I was a day late in turning up the heat. Once it's sitting there, presumably it's dry. Once it's been sitting there for 24 to 48 hours at 200 degrees, I would consider it dry. All right? The next step is to crank it up to the desired heat, but you can do it in increments if you're not sure. I did it in 100 degree increments. So the, after that drying time, I cranked it to 300. 300 degrees and let it sit there for two to four hours and then I cranked it up to 400 to my baseline why do I use 400 as a baseline as a, as a, the uh, the go-to temperature for this batch well there's been studies actually there's been studies at least one that I know of that showed an experiment involving chalcedony. Now chalcedony responds to heat at 400 degrees. It becomes easier to nap at 400 degrees. This was a scientific study and it took less than an hour at 400 degrees to achieve the heat treat effect and any time after that hour didn't matter. So one hour it achieved the effect you can leave it in for another hour or another day. Didn't matter with the chalcedony. So I tend to leave it sitting for four hours just in case, although it can probably sit for less. And I know it can. But what I do is I leave it longer because uh, that's what I recommend other people to do, and I want to be doing the same thing I'm recommending. Okay, so this sat at three at uh, 400 degrees for four hours after drying out, and then what I do, I go back in the shop and I turn it off after four hours. Let it cool for 12 hours, and then start taking them out. In this case, it cooled for another two days because I didn't take them out right away, or maybe it was three days. All right. So now that they're all cooled down, I take a look. And these are these pieces were really cruddy to start out with. Oh yes. Yeah, let me see. I got some pieces in the trash that were that I threw out earlier. Let me see if I can find everything. Hold on. Yeah, I don't prepare for these videos very well. Where'd it go? I think it, I think I found it. Yeah. All right. So this is a heat treat piece. This is all this is all heat treat in there, but this one is not. 
but uh, this one is. You can see the difference in color change. This is a raw piece. This is miserable to nap, but this one, after heat treat, I took off a flake and it's nice. Even though it's not glossy very much, it's much nicer than the former piece. This was miserable. Okay, so that goes in the trash, but I like this one. Keeping that. That's keeping it. I'm keeping it for myself and being greedy with that one because I like the yellow. All right, the other one that I took out earlier was a mistake. Yeah. It was. Uh, it it, uh, it popped, so to speak. Different different pieces of this flew off, and we call these uh, pot lids when it does this thing. And I miss I, I thought this was the inner piece to that, but I, I'm missing that piece. I don't know where I went. It's a round piece popped out. It was in there. Anyway, you can see that this one was in there but it reacted stupidly it had pot lids when I took it out it's all shattered and stuff disappointing now I can still try to use it but in most cases pieces like this and I had I had high hopes for this but unfortunately pieces like this are no good they'll sneak up on you even though it might look clear there could be areas in there while you're napping that'll cause it to snap in half because there's internal cracks. So I just toss the whole thing. So that was an unsuccessful one. Let me show you a, a success. I showed you a successful one. I'm keeping that one. Other, the other success was this stuff. This stuff is very, very hard in the raw state but I took some flakes off earlier and it looks nice now oh yes I'll show you it has a little bit of gloss to it it's a little bit shinier than the original surface All right can you see no I don't know something's wrong anyway that's better so yeah it's a little bit glossier you can kind of see it there but anyway, it naps much better than it did before I before I put them in there. Okay? Now, in the previous video, I was telling you how I make notes on these things. But you can see, that's what that is. I'll get back to that in a minute. You can see the difference in glossiness on this stuff. And this is the snap and half chert that I was using earlier in the week. It's this stuff back here. That stuff. No, don't do that. It's this stuff back here. The snap and half chert is the stuff I said was good for flint and steel. It glosses up really nice at 400 degrees, which I was happy about. But it still snaps in half, of course. It's still snap and half chert, but it's heat treated snap and half chert, which is much easier to nap, especially small points with notches. Yeah. And I was napping this. On video earlier, the video that got ruined. Because the camera does funny things when I'm not paying attention. In the other video, it actually turned off when I tried to adjust the zoom. Why? I don't know. I pushed the wrong buttons. I got an expression for that. I must have happy fingered it and uh, pushed the wrong button and it did the wrong thing. But it naps so much better now than it did before. 
original surface, very dull, and now it's very glossy. So yeah, very. I'm very glad that I can nap this now into some awesome points. That's the same stuff as this. The snap and half chirp. Now the notes, I said I was gonna get back to that, right? All right. This is where it gets complicated. If you wanna do it right in a perfect world, what you'll do is, where's my pen? You saw I just had it, right? I just had it. So, there it is. Yeah. So in the, in the perfect world, you're going to go, uh, you're going to write down where it came from. Now, this one is a nap-in stone. I got a bunch of this snap and half chert at the nap-in. I call it snap and half chert. I don't know what it's called. It's some kind of uh, Edwards Plateau chert type stuff. So let's just say, uh, I got this at the Brady nap-in. So I will go... In a perfect world, I would write on here, uh, Brady, okay? And then, also in a perfect world, I would write the temperature that I heated at, right? 400 degrees. And if it, would, it maps well at 400 degrees, I put a check mark. Perfect. On every piece like this. I've got a bunch of I got this one. I got this one. I put a bunch of this snap and half stuff in here. A bunch of it. And it all came out nice. This one I took a flake off earlier. Perfect. This one I took flakes off earlier. Perfect. All right, so if it uh, naps well at 400, there it is. And I stashed this and I know this, this one I got from Brady and uh, it worked well at 400. Now, this is where it gets complicated. Let's say you don't want to do it this way. You say, that's ridiculous. I need to start at a low temperature because I don't want anything to get messed up like you just showed us. I don't want to throw it away like you did. You, know? you don't want this to happen to you because this got too hot. In case I didn't mention that, this got too hot. It probably would have been better at a lower temperature. So you don't want that to happen. What you do, you put it to 200 for 24 to 48 hours. Same kind of drying time. And then, once that time is over, increase it by 50 degrees. Where is it? 250. Let it sit for an hour or two or three. 250. 250 is usually not hot enough to cook anything. 275 is where it starts to affect the stone. So you let, you let it warm up, let's say for an hour, at 250. And then you want to try the lowest possible setting for heat treating at first, and you bring it up to 275. Let it sit for four hours at 275. Then you go, all right, done cooking. You know, lid is on, everything is on. It's been sitting at 275 for four hours, and I'm being very cautious. I'm going to turn it off now, after four hours. And you let it cool for 12 hours, and you start taking it out. Now, most stone is not going to react well at 275. It's not going to do much. But you test every single piece, and some of the stuff... Let's just say it's this stuff. Some of this stuff will be very nice. At 275, you'll go, ooh, 275, it works really, really good. So, where did I get this stone? Brady. 275 degrees. All right. And check mark. Good. Put it off to the side because it's good. I start checking the other ones. Man, they didn't work right. They, did, they don't nap really well. There's hardly any change at all. So what you do, put the lid back on, up to 200. Let it sit for four hours to get it warmed up. 
You can let it sit for a whole day if you want. Doesn't matter. Doesn't harm the rock at all. But I usually, when I'm reheating, it's like two to four hours at 200, just to get them warmed up from, you know, ice cold because it's been real cold lately. All right, and then you crank it to 250 again for an hour or so to get it warmed up to 250, and you go past the 275 to 300. Let it sit for four hours. Okay. All right, we let it sit for four hours. Turn it off. Let it sit for 12 hours. Okay, it sat for 12 hours. Take the lid off. Go back in and test another one. Test another one. And you go, ah, it didn't work. You test them all. This is a perfect world now. You test them all. None of them worked. Dang it. They are, they're all still the same. All right. Well, I got a little, little batch that worked. I want, I want some results. So you go like this. You put the lid back on. 200 again. Four hours to get it warmed up to 200. Go to 250. Sit for an hour. Go to 300. Sit for an hour. Go to 350. Sit for four hours. Right, because the last four hour period was 300, if I'm doing this right. It doesn't matter how often you do this. It doesn't really affect the stone. They're fine. All right, you let it sit at 350 for, at, at, let's see, is it 350? Yeah, 350 for four hours. Turn it off. Let it sit for 12 hours. Take the lid off and test them all. Take little flakes off. And maybe you start seeing glossy. Ooh, glossy. All right, so here we go. I just cut myself. All right, hold on. Little, little break here. See if I can do this quickly. Let's see here. This, it does get sharp, believe me. Uh, he treated Heat treated shirt is very, very sharp. It's like glass. Okay. I learned to do this immediately so that there is no, no messing around. Okay. I don't want no infections. All right. So you say, ooh, it's good at 350. So here you go. You write on there, Brady. 350 degrees. Check mark. Yay. Put it off to the side. You have to put a check mark because, well, I do anyway, uh, to distinguish between a potential 350, like make sure you put it in at 350, and it's already been put in at 350. If it's, if it's got no check mark, that means I should heat treat it to 350. I haven't heat treated it yet, but the stuff that I've heat treated before of this type responds to 350. It means I didn't heat it yet. Once I have the check mark, it means I did heat it. Okay, so I'll put it off to the side. Everything that works at 350, you're chipping it, it works. You write down where it came from and the temperature and the check mark that it's heated and you stick it off to the side. So some of it, let's just say it as, as an example, this is just an example. Some of it responded at 275. It goes in a stack. Some of it responded at 350. It goes in a stack. All right? But not all of it. Let's say not all of it responded. There's still some stuff that's not really napping like you want. Or it might be better later with more heat. Put the lid back on. Put it up at 200 for four hours to get it up. 250 for an hour, 300 for an hour, 350 for an hour, 400 for four hours. Now you don't have to wait an hour in between each one. However long you think it'll take to heat up the stones. After you've tested a batch, a bunch of it, it may only need 30 minutes at each setting. But 400 is where I ended up because that's just my go-to. So this is what I did on this. So all of this is at 400. 
Now, oops, the procedure is once it's there for four hours, you turn it off, wait 12 hours, take the lid off, and then test them all. All right, so I'm going to be testing these all right now because that's what I did on mine. It's been heated to 400 degrees. Now, am I going to write Brady on each one of these? No. Why? I don't have time to do that these days. Besides, I don't need to. I just nap it. I don't keep track of this anymore. If it naps good, it naps good. If it doesn't nap good, it doesn't nap good. I don't care. I'm not going to keep track of this little stuff. Unless someone asks me. And then I had to do a test run. Someone will ask me, what was the temperature that your flakes heated or heated at? If I can remember, I'll tell them. If I can't remember, I'm going to go, well, I don't remember exactly. I can do a test run if you really want to know. I used to write these things down in a notebook, but don't ask me where the notebooks go. They, they wander off. I write all this information in notebooks and they disappear. It takes me longer to find the notebook where I wrote the information than it does just to do another test run. Believe it or not. Yes. So if they ask me, you know, what's the heat? I got to do a test run. I'll get back to you. And let you know. Because it takes me less time to do the test run than it does to try to find the stupid notebook where I wrote the notes down. Okay, so let's do this and test these after I make sure I eliminate these notes because I don't want to get mixed up. Now, if I'm if I'm specifically testing everything at 275, I got to write it down on each stone because that's a very unusual thing for me to um, heat it that low. I do do it. I do do it at that low temperature, but it's not very often. It's usually around 400. So if it's at 400, I don't even take notes anymore. It just goes in the big batch of heat treat that I've got, all mixed together. Now if someone asks me, where is that? Where does it come from? And blah, blah, blah. I don't know. It's a mystery. But I thought you said it was from Brady. Oh, yeah, it's from Brady. Well, what else are you not telling me? I don't know. It's a mystery. Yeah, but I, th I thought that uh, you said some of it was tested at 300 and stuff. Yeah, I might have said that before. I guess I did. I don't know. Well, what is it? <laughs> I go, sorry, dude. I don't keep track of it anymore like that. And besides, even if I did, I hesitate to give you the information because... Your results may vary. Oh, yes. You might have stone looks just like this and it blows up at 400. Or it's way too heat treaty. It's like, yeah, it's a lot softer than I really wanted it to be. You tell me, you, you send me an email. Yeah, I heated it at 400 and it's way too, way too heaty treaty. Too much. I said, okay, well, that's your stone. Didn't happen to me, so don't blame me. Yeah, but I asked you, and you told me, and now it's all messed up. Now I've got to buy like 200 bucks worth of more stone. Yeah, so I don't even give that information out anymore. Yeah. I'm giving it out in this video, but disclaimer. Your results may vary. Oh, yes. Don't take my word for it. The secret to heat treating is knowing how your rock reacts to heat. Yours, even if it looks exactly the same as mine. You're going to have to keep track of all the numbers yourself. Starting at 275 and doing like I told you. All right? And if I can find that study with the chalcedony, it probably has little tidbits of information in there that are good to know. I don't know how they tell. I can't remember if there's a test 
for how to see if something's heat treated or not. Because it's still kind of controversial whether or not people can, or these lithic analysts can tell if it's heat treated. The best way to tell is the differentiation in color between heat treated and not. That's the best way to tell right now. But it could be that they've developed a test to look at it at a molecular or even at atomic level. I don't know. But anyway, moral of the story is your results will probably vary. And I'm not going to go out on a limb and give you the, a uh, recipe that might ruin your stone. Although it doesn't ruin mine, it might ruin yours. So I'm not going to even tell you. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. The best way to do it is to experiment with your own stone by yourself. Don't listen to anybody else. I know a lot of you guys out there are going to say, well, that's not really practical. I want to know. I want to know. What's so, so hard about just giving us some values? Hmm? What's so hard about that? I don't want to be wasting my time. I don't. I can't sit there and do that thing with the 275 degrees to start and then work my way up to where it actually is good and nappable. Yeah, well, you need a different hobby then. Yeah, sorry to say. If you can't do that, you don't have the patience or the time or the, you don't want to bother with it, just don't heat it. Don't heat it. Just work it all wrong. Or, you know, reassess how dedicated you are to the hobby. I'm not going to... I am no longer recommending recipes. Just like I'm no longer doing stuff on the side. Because it's not worth it. Nope. Your results will may vary. And in many cases, especially with me, it always varies. Yeah, the, the, the values you gave me were okay, but I don't know. Is it me or is it, is it the heat treat? I don't get results. Uh, yada, yada, yada. Have you done any more research on this? Uh, can you do a test run with my stuff that I send to you? And on and on and on and on. I could be doing nothing but heat treat stuff full time. I'm not a heat treater. I'm a I'm not a fleet I'm not a flint heat treater. I'm a flint napper. Heat treat is just one of the one of the aspects of flint napping. I used to work with new guys with their heat treat but that's when I could just take my time with it nowadays I'm trying to turn it into a business and since your results may vary and it could be the same exact stone from the same exact place, the quarry. I'll tell you where the quarry is or someone will tell you and we both get it from the same place. It could be the same stuff and your results will be different than mine. And you'll say, I don't know how you did it, but I can't get the stuff to nap like you just showed on video. What's up? I don't know, dude. I don't know. And I don't really have the, the time. I hate to say that. I don't really have the time to investigate why it didn't work for you of course most of the time everyone's happy everyone yeah it worked it's easier to flint nap now and I can get notches done whereas I couldn't notch it before thank you very much and I'll say good I'm glad it worked I'm glad you were able to test it you know and I'm glad that you took my advice on how to ramp it up at different temperatures and use the turkey roaster that reminds me and so, you know a lot of times it works out now 
this this I got reminded here my mind is random okay here we go I'm gonna zoom in so I can explain this next part some of you guys already noticed this the eagle-eyed YouTube watchers right there there's a hole there and it goes all the way through yeah see that you see it that's for this what is it what is it well if I can get this out of the package I just bought this today at Academy long stem thermometer stainless steel construction quick read tricolor dial blah, blah 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 it's like five bucks it was on sale maybe it was 427 I don't know after Christmas sale this goes up to 550 right perfect what that what what this hole is for is so I can insert a thermometer let me zoom back out I drilled a hole in the side of my turkey roaster so I can insert a thermometer so I can know exactly what the temperature is because that dial down there on especially on this roaster is screwy so you put the lid on and you can watch it you can know the exact time the exact temperature I don't know what's going on I might take off that little metal part there anyway yeah okay I can clamp it yeah that works I'll clamp it to the top there so that's a real I'm not a real that's a better way to take the temperature not instead of depending on this dial you get a thermometer from Academy Sports and Outdoors it's in the barbecue section outdoor gourmet you know you look in the barbecue section or the grilling section or the camping section I think they might have it at other stores but there was just a sale where I'm at so I went I got not only one but two two of these just in case yeah all right so how do you drill a hole in the side of the turkey roaster I mean how is that possible it doesn't seem like it works you're gonna mess up the electronics and get sparks and kill yourself yeah <laughs> what about the sparks what about the electricity <laughs> what about the danger yeah the heating elements are actually below down below they're not there might be some on the side but they're not up on the top they're not up on the rim so you go up as high as you can like a quarter inch down or three eighths of an inch down from the top of this rim and drill a hole all the way through and that will put your thermometer in a very good position to uh monitor the heat all right you got it the next i'm going to do a lot of batches of heat treat in the next month or so so i needed that just to be sure and you'll need it too and these work even though it's only five bucks these work better in most cases than that dial down there all right back to our regularly scheduled programming this is napping really nice much better than the snap and half chart that i was napping before it's so much better you have no idea actually if you buy this in the auction you'll have an idea because this is one of the buy faces i'm going to offer yeah in fact i have boxes already ready put that in there and i'm going to nap some of these on video yeah this video oh yes so what other questions do I get about this heat treating stuff I'm trying to think yeah recently I just got questions on it how long what temperatures the typical questions and I already told you your results may vary 
but I, I'm going by 400, 400 degrees as my baseline. Everything is adjusted from there. If it's at 400 degrees and it's it breaks up, like that one, in a perfect world, I would write down 400 like this. This is what I would do if I'm if I'm smart. I'm just gonna try to commit this to memory. But if I'm smart, I'll go uh, Brady 400 degrees. And I'll go X. X means it did not work at 400. And I'll save it. And I'll look and see, do I have any more like this? It didn't work at 400. But if I were to do this with everything that failed, I would have a stack of stone larger than my good stuff. I've had so many failures in heat treat that if I were to do this, I would have stacks of failed stone probably bigger than my stacks of good stone. If my good stone gets sold or I use it. I can't get rid of this stuff unless I throw it away, which is what I'm doing now. <laughs> okay. All right. Can I use this stuff for arrowheads? Yeah, I can. Do I? No, I can give it to you though. Stick it in the box. Yeah, if you want it. You want these little flakes? Probably not, but I can put some in there. Just let me know. You got, you got like two hours after the video is posted. Yeah. <laughs> now you got longer than that. You just let me know uh, if there's enough interest in the smaller flakes of heat treat. Just let me know. So, yeah, I would love a box of small little pretty flakes of heat treat just to see what it's like because I have no idea. It's amazing how much money people spend just to get the knowledge, which is fine. But what amazes me is the knowledge is not out there. You're obviously going to pay for the knowledge because you cannot get it elsewhere. That amazes me. What are the other guys, what are the other nappers doing? They're not talking about this stuff. What are they doing? They're talking about artifacts. This artifact was made at this time period and you need to nap it this way with this tool. Is that what they're talking about? They don't talk about how to make your life less miserable. Do they, any of them talk about that? Does any other napper talk about how to make your life less miserable? I don't think so. They don't cover that aspect. Heat treating will make your life less miserable. It's worth the effort. It's worth listening to my stupid comments about me not telling you how to heat treat because your results may vary. You might say, that's just stupid, dude. Just tell me. And I'll, I'll do with the information what I want. Just tell me. I'll do what I want with the information. Yeah, but that would be good if you actually did do it like that. No, you'll come back to me and you'll start complaining. Me, me, me. Of course, not all of you. Like one out of 50 will do that. That one out of 50 spoils it for everybody. Me, 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 me. It didn't work. It only worked in some of them too. And I, I thought I had the same stuff you did. Can you test mine? I'm gonna send it. I'm gonna send it to you. I am. I'm gonna send it to you tomorrow. I got your address. Expect it in the mail. And then tell me. You heat treat it and see. You know, one out of 50 will do that. And it make, makes everything more stressful. And then you'll... I'll get a response like... Okay, it naps at 350. Can I tell other people that too? 
I'm gonna start telling all my buddies to nap to uh, heat it at that at that temperature too, right? Can I? I mean, I should, right? I shouldn't be I shouldn't be greedy with the information. I'm gonna start telling all my buddies that we were successful at 350 degrees with this material. So I'm gonna start telling everybody. <laughs> yeah. Please don't do that. Yeah. You're going to create misery that way because other people's results may vary. Your results may not be their results. All right. All right. All right. All right. So, I don't know. What am I going to do here? I need to nap these down into bifaces and offer the bifaces for sale and if I don't nap it down into a biface I can offer it as a flake right I'd rather offer them as bifaces though because it that way I know that it's tested it's actually worthwhile to nap and it's already in a good form and you can do stuff with it Some of it gets really delicate. But yeah, you can do stuff like that. It's so nice. So nice. Just a flake. Just uh, right where I wanted it. Yeah. Right where I wanted it. So I'll be doing this for the rest of the night because I, I don't really have time to make points. All I have time for is to test all this heat treat and offer it in boxes, just little flat rate boxes. And uh, I got that Dacite blade. Yeah. I'm going to offer this one. I'll probably put more flakes, like, you know, more balls of that Dacite in with it. Yeah, how's that? I'll just fill, I'll just put a lot more balls of that dacite in there with that blade. But you'll see when I post the auction tomorrow. And yeah, I don't have time to make points this week. So I'm just going to offer boxes of heat treat and maybe a box of Georgetown. I think I still have enough Georgetown to offer another box of that stuff. might not nap all of these down into bifaces but I see see the incipient bulbs and stuff um, it might not be fair to send these to you in that state because you won't know what to expect if you're a new guy you won't know that those could mess you up and you're thinking yeah, I can take more off of this surface and not worry. I can just skin off a little bit off of this and there will be no defects. But there will be defects. So I need to remove those so you don't have to deal with them. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. So what do I talk about now? Well, I'm doing this skinning, bifacing. Um, it's going to be warm in this next week or so. In theory, I should be able to do some work. But I am going out of town again this week coming up. So uh, prob probably by the time the next auction comes around, I'll be in the same boat where I don't have many points to offer. Uh, just buy faces and heat treat. Eventually, I'll be able to settle into making some flint napping tools, making actual points again. That kind of thing. Yeah, 
this snaps so much better when it's heated. It's my own bias. Yeah, I like the heat treat. But yeah, I'm going to go out of town just to drop off a couple of my kids uh, where they're going to college. I'll be back. Yep. But it takes, it's like a two day a round trip. I'll be gone for two days. One day to get there and one day to get back. Theoretically, it shouldn't take away time from my flint napping because I only nap three days a week. But as luck will have it, you know, sometimes I gotta stay later, I gotta stay longer. There's some errands that need to be done. I need to drive them around there. It's much easier if I just drive them than to pay Ubers or taxis while they're there if they need a ride. They don't all drive their own cars. They depend on either walking or taking Ubers. They're not that far from the campus. Anyway. Sometimes I stay and do errands with them. Oh yeah. Get it all done beforehand. Anyway, I should have time after that in the month of January, except for the first week of January. The other weeks should be a lot better in terms of time to do stuff. I'm not going back to Vermont this winter. Nope. Uh, the earliest I'm heading up to Vermont would be the end of March or something. Yeah. That would be the earliest. Okay. Yeah, and I, I didn't bring a lot of stuff with, with me, so I'm having to purchase some materials while I'm here visit some buddies get some materials from them too it's good to have buddies that have rocks that they can't do anything with because they don't want to nap it but I'll nap it oh yeah I'll, I'll do something with it you don't want to mess with it I'll take it off your hands and uh, let you put something else in your yard that's more beneficial to you It's not taking up space in your yard. That sort of thing. All right, so that's good enough as a bye face. Now this this stuff was giving me trouble. See the crystal pockets in there? Someone told me what those were. No, it wasn't on this. It was on the DAS site. On the ash pockets. So-called ash pockets. They're not really ash pockets. I didn't know that. On the, on the DAS site. This is not an ash pocket. This is a crystal pocket. But it reminded me that someone clarified what the so-called ash pockets were in the DAS site. They're actually something else. They're called something else. If you know what you're talking about. Which I don't when it comes to that stuff. I just nap it, okay? I don't analyze it. Except for it's good or it's not good. Or it's steppy or it's not steppy. Or it's going to make you miserable or not miserable. That's what, that's what I do. I don't know the terminology. And even if I did, I'd forget it soon enough. What was that called again? Can you tell me? Oh, uh, sorry, dude. I, I actually forgot. Aren't you keeping up with this stuff? Well, I should be, right? I'm, a, I'm what you call a professional. But no, I don't keep up with it, what it's called. I just know if you can nap through it or not. Can you nap through a crystal pocket? Can you keep it in the point? Can you make it part of your finished piece? Yes, sometimes you can. And I'll show you that 
sometimes. But other times, no. Most times, no. You can't uh, include that. I'm going to put these aside. These, these things just have too many defects. I'm not going to offer that. And it wouldn't be fair to you guys. I'm only going to send out the good stuff. All right. Oh, that's so nice. Yep. Some of you guys will receive this and you'll go, it looked nice on video, but it's too crumbly for me. I think I might prefer the raw. Well, that's why you bought it. For the knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. Some people, though, they already know. They either don't want to do it themselves or they want to see the stuff that I'm napping in person. Because they're trying to copy my style exactly, which is perfectly fine. And if they're not having success, they want to know why. Is it the stone? Is it them? Is it the tools? What is it? They're on a short, the short track or the fast track to learning the technique, which is perfectly fine. It's awesome. I wish I was able to do a fast track with the people I was learning from. Yeah. I had no idea. I had no idea that some nappers out there are napping stones or they're saying they're having trouble with it when they're really not. You don't know this until you're a good a good napper. You'll say to yourself, you know what? He's he's looking like he's having trouble with that stone, but it's not that bad. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good stuff. He's not really He's not really suffering. He's looking like he might be, but he's not. That's good stuff that he's using. Yeah, but the new guys don't know this. So it's good to get the baseline. It's good to get the information, the knowledge. So we're not floundering around in limbo not able to tie it down tie yourself or anchor yourself down to a baseline I'm going to be saying that a lot because it happens in archery too I'll be getting into how to tune arrows eventually and there's a baseline involved with that too how do I know if the arrow is flying well what's the baseline for that and then what's the spine weight in the what, how do you figure these things out without high-tech stuff? I want to know how they did it back in the day. You know? What is the What did they use for their starting point? How did they know when what to do with more stiffness or less stiffness on the arrow shafts? How did they know? I can, I can go over all that stuff in videos. Now some people... To this day, I mean, they might have started to pick up primitive archery 20 years ago, but to this day, they still are out in limbo. They don't know what makes for a good tuned arrow. And they can't get the information because people just say, just experiment, dude. Shoot a dowel. Just shoot a dowel out of your bow. If it goes straight, copy the dowel. Well, what if it doesn't go straight? And what if it sometimes it goes straight and sometimes it doesn't? You know, can I shoot it without fletching or does it have to be fletched? What kinds of fletch? Is there like a practice fletch? Or do I have to use formal fletches on everything? Like, what if I tie a cotton ball to the end just to save time? Is that going to work? You know, all, this, all these questions, yada, yada, yada. I can answer those. Yep. Because I went through that. And yes, you can just tie a piece of cotton, 
cotton ball to the end. It does affect the drag and it does simulate fletching. You just put a little ball on the end of cotton. Not hanging off the side, but you know, you know, just stick the shaft through the cotton ball and kind of wrap it at the end and it'll create drag so you know that at least you got some drag on there and it takes like five seconds to do it. Just you know, you can be creative when you're trying to tune your arrows or find out what what type of spine your bow takes because every bow that's made by yourself in the primitive way is different from any other bow so you have to figure out what the spine weight needs to be for your arrow coming out of your particular bow it's like heat treating it's your particular batch your bow is your particular bow not all arrows are going to work with it just like when you're heat treating, not all recipes will work with your heat treat. You know, the sources might say one thing, but it's not working with your batch. The sources might recommend a certain spine weight, but it's not working with your bow. Yada, yada, yada. All right. Did I annoy enough people? With my talking that I now need to do a silent video so that I can make up for my annoying explanations. Yes? Yeah. I think I do need to make another silent video so I can make up for it. I need to finish that uh, Flint Ridge point. I got the biface sitting over here. Yeah. See, I got the biface sitting there. I've also got the the uh, failed attempts at uh, the little flake points in there, but they'll be offered separately. The uh, the Flint Ridge is a side project. It's not going to be in the auction. And I agreed to do it because I can get it on video. Otherwise, I would not have done that side project. All right, why did I bring it out? I think I made a mistake there. Oh, I'm gonna finish it. That's what. I, that's why I brought it out. I brought out the Flint Ridge point because I, I need to finish it on video, and I think that's what it started out as a silent video with a director's cut. I'm going to finish it out with a silent video and a director's cut. How's that? Okay. That's where that that's where that is. Or that's what that is. Oh, that's that hurt because I've got a a crack in there. Why is it not focusing? Hmm? I got an incipient crack in here. That's dangerous. I don't know if you can see it. I don't think I installed it. I think it's part of the stone itself. That's the that's the danger of this stuff that uh, it's hard to nap originally. You heat treat it. Uh, it's still going to have the defects it had before. It's just going to be a little bit worse because the material is a little bit more brittle. And it could snap right there. The whole thing in half. Mm. I was going to send it out without trying to thin it down further. And that would have reared its ugly head and someone would have not been happy. So I'm going to try to remove that. Thin it down more. Let's see if I can get rid of it. Let's take care of this on the side first. I'm not doing a very good job in, of uh, running flakes without crushing the edge in some areas. Yep, yep. 
Yep, 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 yep. All right. I gotta be careful with this next step. So just hold on. I'm gonna be in silent mode probably for a second. For or for a bit. Thank you. 
Yeah, I had to make sure I could thin it down because I didn't want to send it out with that crack in it. And that crack was obviously, oh, well, that crack obviously made it too weak to thin down. I had to remove that lump on the other side. So yeah, I'll offer it as a, a broken one. Now, you could, you might say, and you might be right, that I could have just left it and let someone break it themselves. If they wanted to, they might have been able to use it with the crack in it as a whole piece with a crack in it. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in getting bifaces with cracks in them. Because I can put those aside and not continue to nap those. And then just let you do whatever you want with it. You know, I can offer those with cracks as whole bifaces if you want without me having to mess with them to make sure that they are sound enough to thin down. You know what I mean? I really pushed the limit on that one because I wanted to make sure. If it, if it was sound, it wouldn't have cracked, I don't think. I think that was a good flake. A good thinning flake. It just didn't... It didn't work because there was already a crack in there. Yeah. But, you know, the crack goes the other way. The crack goes this way not this way so how did that interfere hmm well there's some weirdness going on there it's going in this direction even though it ended up cracking in a different way than that crack in there still still could have weakened it to the point where I couldn't thin it but I'll learn from the neck I'll learn something from that experience it could have been just too thin anyway for what I wanted it to do and no it had nothing to do with that crack in there could be Let's see. Does that how far does how far down does that crack go? Is it just surface? I can see it right there. I can see it go down in right there. See how it it, it does go in about a sixteenth of an inch or so. That's how deep that crack is, and it could have caused it to become weak right there. Anyway, we get a chance to nap that to see how it works. It is nice material. All right. I'm going to be doing that the rest of the night. I don't think... I really don't want to capture it all on video. I did this one earlier. I'll just offer it like that. Yeah, I need to generate several boxes, and if I try to do it on video, I won't be able to get the number of boxes out that I want to get out. All right. There's not that many big pieces in here, and I don't want to be risking breaking the big pieces. I want to be able to offer them. If I do it on video, I think I'll be unnecessarily exposing the large pieces to breaks. Like I did with that one. That last one. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, yes. So I'll be mixing flakes in with the bifaces or... If I have enough bifaces, I'll just offer a box with only bifaces and some of the accompanying chips. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. 
was going to show the translucency on that. Now some of these I won't I won't thin them down very far. How's that? If I see that there's no defects, I'll just leave them. Leave them as kind of a little, a little bit thick. If I don't see any defects, if I don't see the need to remove the defects, I'll let you have fun with it. There is no. I thought for a second there there was an incipient crack there. It's good enough for that one. All right, let's see. Yeah, I'll finish out most of this box. Now this is too nasty. I'll finish out most of this box and then I'll uh, end the end the video. Yeah. I'll say the end. You can see it now. You can see it now. I'll remove all the stray little shattery flakes so they won't be in the box. I'll just give you these flakes coming off. Yep. I wish I had time to write 400 degrees on all these pieces, but I don't. I don't have time to write the temperature that I heated it at. You just have to remember from the video. Even though it does sometimes not nap exactly the way I'm hoping, it's still so much better than it was before. Yep. Oh yes. I can't do that in the raw state. It won't do it. Not with that amount of force, I didn't have to put much effort into it. Flakes just peel off when it's heat treated. As long as it's in good shape. Now a lot of times it doesn't heat treat well. That's just the nature of the game. But in many cases it heat treats extremely well or the heat treat produces very good results. I gotta put the extension on this so it won't be flying away. It's too short. Some of you guys might be saying, yeah, it's too short. Every, every time I try it, with no matter how long I make it, it flies out of the, the hold behind the knee. It just, I can't do it. Yeah. 
Don't worry. There's a lot of people in that boat. Just use the strap. Figure out some other way to hold it. Remember, I don't use a pad in combination with my indirect punches. With, a, with my horizontal indirect, I don't use pads to back it up. The only thing I have backing it up is my glove. And I try not to interfere with the flake travel. I don't pull or support with the gloves in any way. I just hold it where I'm napping it. You know, not gripping it tight. I'm using the weight of the workpiece against itself, even in a small scale like this. I'm still using the weight of the workpiece against itself by striking fast. I'm not holding it firm. I'm just holding it well enough. And you'll get used to it after a while. You know how to minimize the effort in holding it. You'll get napper's cramp if you're gripping this with an iron grip. You don't need to. You don't need to have an iron grip on this workpiece. Oh no. It'll work just fine by just firm but not an iron grip so to speak. Or a death grip. A death grip means death for this because you'll end up trying to depend on your grip to hold it steady instead of using the mass of the workpiece against itself. It's not a good habit to get into. In my opinion. You can. You can hold it with a death grip and slow down the strikes and depend on your grip to uh, conserve the energy. You want that piece? All right. Okay, that's good enough. You guys can have fun with it after that. All right, so that's it. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be trying to fill up boxes like this with various bifaces in various states of thinness, but they're mostly gonna be crude bifaces. But it's heat treat, so you can you can thin it down easier than normal. It'll save me time. This one is a little bit dicey. So I'll be showing all of these in the auction video so you know what you're getting. All right, that's it. Hope that helped.